Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Malcolm Maestrell and I'm a membership services coordinator with IAAP. Thank you for joining us for the second webinar of the 2023 Accessibility Testing Considerations mini series. We're excited to continue the mini series with today's webinar testing for web and mobile accessibility using a screen magnifier. But before we begin, we have a few general housekeeping items to go over. Closed captioning is provided. To enable closed captioning, select the CC icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. The stream text links for English, French, German, Spanish, and Swedish will be posted in the chat as well. American Sign Language Interpretation is also provided. Microphones are muted to prevent any background noise or disruptions. And we ask that all attendees please post your questions in the Q&A. The chat will be monitored for general dialogue and technical issues. And today's webinar will be recorded and available in our webinar archives. And we will send out a copy of the recording and presentation to everyone who registered. And now I would like to turn today's program over to our presenter, Preeti Rora. Thanks, Malcolm. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, whichever part of the world you all have tuned in from. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'll just start my screen sharing. Uh, let me know uh, if my screen is visible. This is Malcolm. Everything looks great. Thanks, Malcolm. Okay, um, so here I am today uh, to present a session on, you know, performing accessibility testing using a screen magnifier. You know, we will be talking about mobile uh, side of things as well as web. Okay. Before we go in and discuss the different details throughout the session, I would like to introduce myself, you know, the company that I work at, and then we'll, uh, you know, deep dive into the session. About myself, I'm Preeti Rora, Chief Accessibility Officer at Barrier Break, IAAP CPWA certified. I'm a low vision uh, person. Okay, uh, but I'm a native uh, screen reader user, not a magnifier user. So it's sort of a disclaimer. I use magnification for very, very little time in a day because, you know, it gives me eye strain and my temples basically start paining. So I would use it only if I want to see a particular, you know, layout or something and if it is utmost necessary for me to do so. Uh, but whenever I use a magnifier, I would, uh, I always prefer speech with it. Primarily, I rely on the screen reader, be it on the laptop or on my mobile phone or tablets and, you know, television and gaming, etc. So, a uh, bit about myself, uh, started working with Shilpi Kapoor, who's the CEO at Barrier Break, uh, two decades back when you know, accessible was not known to people in India. Uh, Shilpi and Barrier Break was the company to start uh, the conversation around accessibility. And uh, fast forward 20 years, uh, we have seen a shift. Yes, not, uh, I would say, a satisfactory one, but yes, definitely there's a moment. But when we talk about uh, the Western world, the U European region, the Australian continent, US, Canada, accessibility uh, in this part of the world is, you know, much, much at a higher end. And that's where, you know, we work with different clients uh, as we service uh, clients from uh, 14 different countries globally. So I started my journey as a tester and then went on to become a consultant and heading the testing team and then moving on to become a chief accessibility officer. Uh, about barrier break, uh, barrier break, as I said, we started almost two decades back and uh, we are uh, the leaders when it comes to, you know, 
providing accessibility solutions uh, in the offshore market. We have a team of around 270 plus people who are uh, you know, accessibility passionates and a large number of uh, people in our team are people with the lived experiences, people with disabilities, not only people with visual impairments, people with mobility impairments, people with hearing impairments, as well as, you know, people on the autism uh, spectrum disorder. So we, uh, you know, we have the end users who would, you know, who are part of our processes and who help us come up with the best recommendations possible while you know we are auditing products or services or we are consulting our clients etc we service different clients across the globe uh, right from fintech education retail sector healthcare banking and government we have service clients from five different continents across 14 different countries uh, primarily we are based out of India and Mumbai is our head office, but we are, uh, you know, we function remotely and on a hybrid model uh, where people from different parts of the country are, have, are working with us, not only from India, but also abroad. So let's, uh, you know, move right into uh, the session. What all things we are going to discuss in today's session? Uh, a bit of introduction about screen magnifiers. What are the different types of magnifiers? What are the different features they offer? And uh, from a user perspective, what are the usage patterns? Based on the usage patterns, we will understand what are the kind of accessibility challenges people using screen magnifiers face on the digital world, be it websites or mobile apps. And understand how uh, what implementation techniques we need to keep in mind in order to make uh, their experience a smoother one okay uh, on the way we will also talk about you know how uh, whether vcac conformance is imp important versus uh, user experience there will be different examples that i would love to share with everyone which talks about a not only WCAG conformance, but going beyond and make sure that the user experience for screen magnifier users is enhanced. <laughs> to start off things, uh, screen magnifiers. Screen magnifiers uh, is an assistive technology which is used by people with partial sightedness, which basically enlarges all the content on the screen. Okay, uh, So there are people with partial sightedness, uh, like uh, those with cataracts, glaucoma, uh, as well as people like me with aging who are also experiencing macular degeneration. Okay, uh, Not only, uh, you know, Young age adults, also people who are elderly users would prefer magnification at different levels. Uh, people in different situations who experience uh, a situational disability like those who may be tired after a long day would benefit by using a magnifier or somebody who is browsing the web uh, you know, in a situation where there is too much of sunlight or glare on their screen, which is, you know, preventing them from reading the content with ease, etc. So uh, people of different age groups would use a magnifier, uh, unlike a screen reader, okay, um, as per the survey conducted by WebAIM, as well as, you know, government of UK, people with visual impairments, and the percentage of uh, assistive technology is higher. Uh, and the topmost is uh, screen magnifiers and not surpri surprisingly screen readers because in the digital accessibility space we most of us largely uh, you know focus more on screen readers but when it comes to uh, the real uh, you know, users who are on the ground and there is a large segment of people with visual impairments who use a screen magnifier that's where you know I decided to do this session so that 
uh, we can understand what are the things that would work for them and what are the design changes that we need to bring in to make uh, their experience a superior one. So screen magnifiers today are available for you know, desktops, laptop, uh, computers, tablets, and your mobile phones. Okay. Uh, I would like to share a small experience from myself. Like uh, I primarily use a laptop these days and using a magnifier on a laptop, which does not have a secondary monitor attached to it is pretty cumbersome because you're literally leaning forward and you know within five to ten minutes you will start feeling the next sprain, okay because you are trying to look into the screen uh, instead of you know not relying on speech and trying to read it because the screen is uh, further away from the user when it comes to a laptop versus a desktop you know the monitor is bigger in size and you can adjust the monitor angles much much better uh, which is not necessarily the case with laptop. You can't bring it further towards you. Okay, so let's talk about what are the different screen readers that are available today. Oh, sorry, <laughs> screen magnifiers that are available. There are magnifiers and lots of them on the Windows uh, side of things. You have the inbuilt uh, magnification, which is there available with uh, the Windows operating system, which is magnifier. And you can also install third-party softwares uh, such as Magic, Fusion, Supernova, Zoom Text. Okay. As far as the popularity goes, uh, it's Zoom Text first followed by you know, uh, Supernova and then the others. When it comes to Mac, Apple side of things, on both Mac and iOS, you have the Zoom as a magnifier, you can turn it on at the operating system and uh, all it's uh, all the features are available to, you know, use it and uh, enjoy the, uh, you know, computer with these. Lastly, on Android, we have the magnification. Okay. Now, uh, also on Android, you can download different third party apps and the list is too long. That's why I have not covered here. But all the magnifiers provide you with different set of features, which are quite rich and not necessarily the default operating system magnifiers would have those. That's why users like me would prefer a third party uh, full fledged magnifier rather than only relying on a uh, operating system specific magnifier. So let's uh, you know, find out some of the features. It gives you different magnification levels. Okay, so to give you an example, if I'm using Zoom on my iOS, uh, on my iPhone, uh, I can magnify the screen up to 15 times. Versus if I'm using a Supernova or a Zoom text on my laptop or a desktop computer, I can take it up to 60 times. Okay, so that's the levels to start with. You have different modes where you can decide that the full screen would be magnified or only part of the screen would be magnified. And as the user moves from one part of the screen to another, then the content will keep magnifying. Uh, you can also dock a particular area, uh, especially these features are available again in softwares like Zoom Text, Supernova, Magic, et cetera, where you can dock uh, you know, let's say the top part of your screen. And so you, the bottom half will show you the content in a normal view and the top half, which is a docked area, will show you the content in an enlarged or a magnified view. Apart from the levels and different modes, uh, other features include focus tracking. So as you go, uh, you can navigate using a keypad, uh, sorry, a keyboard, a touchpad, a mouse and other pointing devices. So here's an interesting insight. Not all magnifier users are mouse users and not all magnifier users are keyboard users. So we'll learn about what are the different usage patterns in a while. When we talk about, uh, you know, focus tracking, it helps user 
track their focus as they move around the screen. Maybe they are filling up a form or cycling through the uh, options within a menu. Apart from focus tracking, users also tend to turn on, uh, you know, smoothen the edges. This is especially helpful, you know, for text as well as images, because while panning the screen from left to right, while reading the content, the smooth edges will help users read the content with ease. Color inversion. Okay, now many people use black text on a white background and many of them also use white text on a black background i'm uh, one of those kinds who prefers white text on a black background because when i see white text in the background i tend to lose the track of the text that i'm reading or track of the content that i'm following so i generally would prefer you know inverting the colors <clears throat> One can do that with the different display settings within Windows or any operating system, or one can do it through a magnifier specific settings. I would go with a magnifier specific settings so that it will, you know, give me more control and you know, it will be more from one dimension rather than having multiple things coming from all different sides. Since it's a spectrum, uh, the people with who are using screen magnifier users, the degree of visual impairment is different. So uh, are their preferences. So some would go in and change even their mouse pointers. Okay, Now, mouse pointers, uh, the standard pointer uh, would be small. They can increase the size. Uh, they can change the color. They can change it even to crosshairs if you know, they are not comfortable with the pointer shape. And also, you know, there is something called circling. So basically, when you press the control key, the area behind the mouse pointer, uh, you know, a circle is drawn, a effect of a circle is drawn, which helps users easily locate their mouse on the screen. Um, mouse checking to go along lastly with keyboard commands. Yes, you have lots of keyboard commands with screen magnifier also wherein people use it to zoom in and zoom out as well as pan through the screen while reading content and also speech output. Like people like me who, uh, you know, find it difficult to read through the screen, uh, experience strain in their eyes. So we would rely on magnification plus speech. All the different magnifiers that we spoke, you know, found about, they all support uh, either using them along with the screen reader or most of them also provide speech output so supernova would give you a speech output so would zoom text ios would support voiceover and so would zoom on the mac android magnification will support talkback even windows magnifier will work with jaws but it will give you a better experience if you work uh, you know use it with narrator yeah. so uh Let's understand what are the different usage patterns. Now, most people would uh, use a mouse to navigate through the screen or move around uh, through the screen, whereas uh, they would use a keyboard when they are filling up forms or cycling through the menu options. Why is that the case? At barrier break, we do lots of user testing, okay, and where we uh, perform testing of different uh, critical tasks that are there in an application, a mobile application, a web application, or user flows or journeys that uh, one would do in a given retail site or an e-commerce, uh, you know, education site. So what users generally tell us is, uh, while we are navigating through the menus, often if we don't control a pointer or a mouse precisely, the menu would tend to close. Okay, so once we have opened the menu from that point onwards, we prefer using the arrow keys and cycling through the options. Okay, and when we do uh, these user sessions, we will generally see people, even though they are prominently using a mouse with while it comes to screen magnification, while filling up forms, they would rely on a keyboard. 
so these are you know the first hand insights that from our user testing sessions that i would i you know decided to share with the community at large so that you know everybody knows how people would generally use it some people would use a doc view or some people would do use an enlarged view like ios gives you an interesting feature zoom controller once you turn on zoom and zoom controller uh, the location where your finger is you uh, do a pinch zoom or you do a, a press and hold it will zoom that way if i want i'm not sure about a particular icon or about the target size i would use zoom controller there and then i can precisely hit the targets <coughs> and one would prefer speech output when you are using uh, reading long pages articles reading pages with a, which are content heavy okay text heavy so they can sit back and you know the reader would read out the content for them so these were some of the usage patterns which will give us good insights while designing digital solutions so now we will talk about the stuff that we all do uh, day in day out in our day jobs about digital accessibility what are the kind of accessibility challenges that people using magnifiers face what are the implementation techniques and uh, you know wcag conformance versus user experience so we'll talk about all of the three as we go you know figure out different elements web elements okay. even though uh, i'm calling them out the web elements they are similar when it comes to mobile apps there is no difference as far as a magnifier user would go points that are so specific to mobile apps i'll talk along the way with that as well okay so to start off things uh, moving content auto updating content most sites today would use a carousel be it a product carousel or if you see on the mobile app side of things i you know <clears throat> the apps would have a getting started screen which would have a carousel there would be news stickers there would be sports sites which will have uh, you know the scores continuously updating there would be stock tickers now all this uh, information okay it creates challenges for people who are using a magnification software now how it creates a problem because the content is moving at a particular speed which is predefined by the author now i as a user might not be able to keep pace with it okay i'm trying to read one news headline and all of a sudden the second headline comes up which breaks my readability which uh, disturbs my reading experience how should we avoid it uh, what uh, techniques should we use uh, don't stop using moving or auto updating content we do understand that you know uh, people do want to add those to attract users attention only thing is provide users with an option to pause or stop the movement or control the speed at which the ticker is moving okay this will ensure that people who are using magnifiers can read the content at a pace that would be uh, suitable to them rather than running through the content next up uh, separators now separators are an important aspect of design which you know generally we believe that designers would include but you know what often we have seen through testing different sites or application the separators are not well thought of okay and separators are very important when it comes to magnifier users on the mobile side of things as well as on the desktop side so when a separator is not defined user would not know where a particular subsection or section gets ended okay they would find it difficult to differentiate one part of the content from another okay sometimes separators are used but they are 
you know very very light in color so you know let's say a separator is use of a very light grayish uh, color and you know background is white now it becomes almost difficult to for screen magnifier users it might be okay for a quote unquote sighted normal user but in case of a screen magnifier user it becomes difficult for them to separate that what should we do uh, to overcome this we need to uh, make sure that separators are prominently visible okay you can use background color differences uh, generally top navigation uh, would have one set of background color let's say dark blue and the footer section would have a black background and the main content would have a white background now only these color differences they act as a separator it tells user okay i have now come out of the navigation area top navigation area or the header section and now i'm into the main content once the main content ends then they know they are in a footer section likewise if you have sidebars and you know depending on how the layout is of the page so such subtle uh, differences just by using colors wisely would also act as a good separator and that would improve the experience for screen magnifiers nowhere a requirement as far as wcag goes okay but very very helpful or and very important for a good user experience for people who are using a screen magnifier if you are using separators with borders even more good okay and make sure those borders are not very light on a white background those borders have sufficient contrast next we talk about tool tips we find them everywhere today right um the different information pop ups or you know the help icons that you would generally associate it with a question mark etc now these tool tips what are the major challenges as far as magnifier users are concerned the moment they move the pointer over to the uh, tool tip content it disappears okay definitely a vcag level double a requirement as far as content on hover or focus goes that's where it is very very important to make sure these tool tips are hoverable as well as focusable some users who are oh you know rely on magnification might use a mouse and others might use a keyboard so if the tool tip content disappears then users won't be able to you know move to that content and read it they need to uh, move to the tool tip content area in order to read it okay um some might be using a dock area of magnification mode or a lens magnification mode in that case again they would try to move their pointer towards the tool tip content other type of challenges uh, with regards to tool tips is people would uh, you know uh, display tool tips on top of content okay the tool tip might be blocking the view of uh, important elements in the and it is overlapping over those elements in such cases make sure users can dismiss the tool tip with the escape key okay that way they will not a lose their position on the screen as well as uh, you know continue using the different elements that are hidden behind the tool tip content menus and sub menus okay so uh, menus are good but only if they are at a single level i'll explain why uh, multi level menus uh, two levels down three levels down now again as the user moves their pointer to the next to see the next sub menu or the third sub menu as soon as they move further right the menu closes okay most such menus the way they are designed is uh, as soon as the mouse hovers out of the location they close such menus are very difficult to read okay even though if they are uh, you know focusable and they have done 
uh, good on that front and it is not only dependent on mouse hover. Uh, the challenge that comes for screen magnifier users is they need to, you know, uh, keep panning from left to right where they lose track of things. Okay, so when we are using menus, we need to make sure that they are restricted to a single level. Uh, consider, you know, grouping items and avoiding multi levels of menus. This is Malcolm Preeti. We have a couple comments in the chat. Uh, people saying that they also agree with you. They prefer uh, using uh, magnification on a desktop over a laptop and uh, another comment, there are some people in wheelchairs or who are bed bound that cannot comfortably use a desktop. These us users usually use a tablet and right. someone else saying toggle tips for the win. Um, yep. And we have one question in the Q&A at the moment. Uh, you mentioned a, in quote, state of the art lab, end quote. Why does Barrier Break use an in-person lab and not remote testing with persons with disabilities and them using their own technology? Yeah, so, uh, you know, state of the lab, uh, why would we use is because, you know, from an India perspective, there are two sides to this. From an India perspective, since assistive technology is quite costly and, you know, people with disabilities in India not most of them would be able to afford those technologies. That's why they prefer and uh, to come down and use those assistive technology at our office location. And we have made all the possible measures to make sure that our office space is accessible. As far as remote testing goes, uh, you know, as, as I said, uh, we work on the hybrid model. Things that are on the software side of things and people who uh, you know, are working with us, we do provide them with laptops and have the different softwares loaded on them, especially the assistive technology, uh, laptops, uh, tablets, and mobiles where they would, you know, use them uh, sitting out of their home. And obviously people who come down for user testing sessions, they would use the different assistive technologies in the office itself. Thank you. That's all the questions we have at the moment. And just a friendly reminder to all attendees to please post your questions in the Q&A function in Zoom. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Malcolm. Uh, so moving ahead, when we talk about uh, images and icons, okay, uh, what kind of challenges magnifier users face? Icons, those are standard you know, your add icon, your drop down icon, your question mark icon, information icon, these are all easy to understand. One, many times we often come across icons that are very fancy in nature. Uh, designer has, you know, become where worn that creative heads, that's good, web needs it. And, you know, you have to keep it engaging. But in such cases, it becomes difficult for magnifier users to understand what is the purpose of that icon? What do what happens if they click on that icon, right? And you know, inevitably, people who, who use a magnifier will have to click on that to understand what is the function associated with it. So, when we are using non-standard icons, we should ensure that there are text labels available, explaining or you know, clearly defining the purpose of those icons. As far as images go, informative images, uh, complex diagrams and charts, one needs to make sure that there is sufficient contrast. If not the entire image, but then the key components or key parts of the image. Because if there is lack of contrast, it will become very difficult for people who are using a magnifier to use it. Especially I've seen when we use invert colors, Okay. These images tend to, uh, you know, uh, give out a different meaning. So I generally avoid, you know, see images without invert colors turned on. And when I read the text, I would, or navigate through the page, I would invert the, my color schemes. 
Okay. So complex images, yes. Uh, another uh, aspect as far as the usage patterns we understood is people would uh, people who are using a magnifier would uh, rely on speech output. So do describe your informative and complex images so that you know people who are using a magnifier would also benefit from the alternate descriptions that we provide. And it's not only the screen reader users who would benefit because it will become easier for them to understand what the diagram is all about and thus uh, you know, access the content with these. So uh, apart from images and icons, very important factor is about images and text, okay? And often during the user testing, what we have seen is people who are using magnifiers would mark this as a blocker when they come across images of text. Okay. You and I would say, okay, text is big enough. I can read through the text, but for them, it becomes blurred. It becomes pixelated when text is created as an image. People find it difficult to customize those who are using uh, custom styles. Plus, low vision users who are using a magnifier, they find it uh, very difficult to read through the text. Secondly, they would also find it difficult to read text displayed over a gradient background. Again, the challenge is largely through the contrast. You know, the text which is there on a lighter shade will tend to fail. You know, it tends to not meet the 4.5 to 1 requirement of VCAG for text contrast. And even though if it is a larger text, it does not meet the three to one requirement either. Uh, how would we overcome uh, use text as plain text? And one can use uh, CSS for formatting and avoid displaying a text on top of images unless it is important, like you know, it is a diagram or a chart or it is a logo image, then it is acceptable but other than that don't use images of text as much as possible uh, when it comes to uh, text displayed on a gradient background make sure the contrast is sufficient uh, again this will help people who are using screen magnification color contrast uh, it's not only people who are color blind who benefit with sufficient contrast but a large segment of low vision users would benefit when text as well as non-text content uh, contrast is sufficient. Okay. Poor text, uh, poor contrast for displaying textual information. Okay. Uh, a quick example that comes to mind is placeholder text on form fields. Often it has poor contrast. Okay, now imagine if there are no visual labels available, a person with who's using a magnifier would definitely struggle to understand what needs to be done uh, for that particular form field. Non-text contrast, power and focus states lack sufficient contrast is another challenge as far as color contrast goes. What needs to be done? Um, okay, we need to follow VCAG, conform to VCAG here. In case of text, standard text, uh, size text, which is 14, uh, less than 14 point in bold or 18 point in size, make sure the contrast is 4.5 to 1. Okay, as in case of large text, which is 18 points and higher and 14 point plus bold, in that case, it has to be 3 to 1. As far as non-text contrast goes, the hover state, when one taps to a particular button or a link, or you know when one moves their mouse pointer on top of a link, the hover effects, the focus effects that uh, we see commonly used on you know, uh, web pages these days. So in that case, make sure the hover states and focus states have a contrast of three to one with the adjacent colors. 
uh moving on we'll talk about uh, some other kind of challenges apart from contrast we'll talk about forms now now in case of forms white space is a big issue okay now too much of white space between the visual lab label and the input field creates a problem user finds it difficult to understand uh, you know or associate a form field with its label you will find this pretty commonly in columns with multiple uh, sorry forms displayed using multiple columns okay a label might be on the column in the left and the input field is displayed on the column on the right that's too much white space between the label and its input field error messages are displayed at the top and you know as soon as user submits the form the focus is yet on the submit button constraints instructions etc are not placed appropriately now instructions about the forms maybe they are placed at the top and it's a form where user needs to again scroll up and down in order to read that i will not say it's a wcag failure but it will surely be a poor user experience for people using a screen magnifier uh, how do we overcome it make sure when uh, lab labels are placed in close proximity an ideal location would be for input fields on drop downs place the label at the left or at the top of the field okay in case of check boxes and radio buttons place the label to the right of the control in case of check boxes and radio buttons also the group header or the group uh, you know instruction needs to be uh, immediately above the controls so that again user does not need to pen too much from left to right in order to read it uh when form is submitted most uh, forms today would display error messages dynamically client side validations are used now it's fine do that use that but make sure that you are setting user focus to the first field with error okay don't leave the user high and dry on the submit button because they would not know that error has appeared at the top even more uh, you know critical for stuff or for messages that appear for a small period of time you know errors please fix the errors in order to continue you give a common message at the top It's a feedback message for sure, but it disappears. Let's say after ten seconds, a person who's using a magnifier would take time to go back up and read and figure out where the error is. Okay, so setting the focus on the first field with error or managing that focus is very very important. Okay, uh, after forms, we'll talk about dynamic updates. Now. dynamic updates we all see it we all enjoy and we find the web engaging and also as far as apps go they are engaging uh when dynamic updates uh are made on a page a toast message may be displayed at the bottom right of the page or at the top right corner a person using a magnifier at that high magnification level will find it difficult to locate it believe me it's not easy it takes time to scroll okay yes we do have an assistive technology but to go back up and figure out where is it displayed it's not a standard convention that it will be on the top right or top left user has to find it okay um secondly uh, operations like you trigger a button and a moodle is open but your focus is again within and the background content it does not move to the uh, newly added component which is the modal dialog now what happens users who are using a screen magnifier with a keyboard would struggle okay if it is displayed at the middle of the page those using a magnifier and a mouse would uh, yet find it but those using uh, with a keyboard would struggle to uh, get there okay uh, toast messages Are again there for a short span of time. 
Okay, so people would again mark such issues as critical during our user testing sessions. They would say, I, I couldn't find where the error was. And you know whether it came and went and how long it was there on the screen, they have no clue. So it's a really critical issue. And you know, we often ask them how would they prefer things, and we will talk about that in the solutions. Other common issue that people who use, use screen magnifiers face with dynamic content is drag and drop operations. Now, you need to drag elements from one part of the screen to another. Now, you need to, you will click on that, hold it down, pan with the high magnification level, find the area, drop area, and then leave your mouse. Okay. Again, a very, very uh, cumbersome exercise for low vision users who are using a screen magnifier. Okay. Uh, what all this means is we can't use dynamic updates. No, that's not the case. There are solutions and we need to make those design changes to make sure those information or those content or those operations are easy for magnifier users as well. So when uh, dynamic updates are uh, provided, okay, uh, people will say, add a live region and you know that update would be read out by a screen reader. But again, not every web user or every mobile user is a screen reader user. They might not have a, screen, a speech output or not. Okay, you would conform to VCAT, but it will yet be a critical access barrier for people using a screen magnifier. So, you know, place those messages which are getting dynamically added in line of the triggering element. Okay, display them for a longer period of time. Give users the time to find those. Just don't expect that every user would read it in five seconds. That's you know, we are thinking how long because we know the application as developers or designers of it, but it's the end user who needs to get to that information. Okay, drag and drop operations. It will really benefit magnifier users if the drop areas or the drop targets are again, uh, you know, nearby to the dragged elements. They know what needs to be taken and where it needs to be placed. So it will cut down on the panning that they need to do from left to right to find it and dropping it in the uh, you know, respective area. Well, in case of Moodle dialogues, make sure that the focus is set inside the Moodle dialog. Yes, a common one. It also benefits people who are using only a keyboard or people who are using screen readers and braille displays. Uh, it's a good uh, design practice to manage the focus correctly and same goes for magnifier users. So after dynamic updates, lastly, we, uh, not last, a few more to go, but yeah, uh, the next one that we are going to talk about is uh, focus order and visibility. Yes, focus order is important for magnifier users as well as focus visibility. Now, people who are using a magnifier along with a keyboard, they want to know where is their focus. So focus visibility is important. Clear uh, focus indicator should be moved, uh, you know, visible when users move from one element to another. Their magnification uh, uh, tool would give them a focus indicator. But if it is suppressed by the... Uh, developer by the designer, it becomes difficult for them okay, uh, to customize it and use the required styles to easily locate their focus. When it comes to uh, focus order, it is very important that it matches the visual order. Yes, it's a VCAG requirement as well at uh, level A under 2.4.3. How it uh, you know creates problem for people who are using a magnifier? They are seeing the content on the screen, okay, and visually they are seeing uh, a different element, and the element in focus is different, which will create a confusing experience for them. 
it is not a blocker issue it's not a critical issue but definitely a major issue because it will take them longer to you know be assured that yes they are on the right element which is currently under focus because visually it is telling them a different story what needs to be done is define a logical tabbing order which is matching with the visual order and secondly make sure that all interactive elements have a clearly visible focus sometimes the default browser focus if you see with the page color themes is not going well then you know try and customize your css so that it gives a better experience for people with low vision as well as those using a magnification here are a few handy tips that i would like to share and it is mobile apps or webs support both the layouts and so uh, your user might be using it in a portrait orientation or an landscape orientation on a mobile i would prefer landscape as a low vision user when i have magnification turned on because my you know screen area increases and that that way i can read with uh, more comfort as compared to a portrait orientation in case of tables long tables freeze the headers whether it is column headers or row headers it makes it a lot more uh, comfortable experience if headers are not freezed okay it becomes difficult for people to keep scrolling back up to know what is the header remember magnifier users are not using a screen reader so the header will not be automatically read out to them they need to go back and up again see the header when you freeze the headers then the experience is much more suitable um uh, when a long table is there and it has multiple columns too many columns a horizontal scroll bar is added for the benefit of all users now when many designs we see they had a very thin horizontal scroll bar it becomes very difficult for magnifier users you know to scroll through that scroll bar okay when you are using a scroll bar make it a thick one which is prominent enough and easy for magnifier users to scroll through uh, as a good practice avoid long tables break them down into small simpler tables and it will be uh, easier and a comfortable reading experience for all users not only magnification users when it comes to text okay it's very helpful if we uh use descriptive link text you know in a short uh, while i'll be showing a demo okay yes even though it's a barrier break web uh, home page yeah but when we use a descriptive links and versus generic links the experience is different uh descriptive link text it will help also magnifier users okay you can conform to vcat by adding aria labeled by or aria labeled to make it descriptive but a magnifier user will yet have to go up and down to read you know what is this read more all about or what is this click here all about when we talk of uh, you know headings how uh, descriptive headings it would help magnification users a heading text which is descriptive of the content below will help users decide whether they want to read this subset of content or not or they need to move ahead and read the content which they were looking for okay so use descriptive headings again something which is covered by uh, vcac and aa and this will also help magnification users uh when it comes to text okay avoid all capitals okay especially in blocks of content in paragraphs don't have a full paragraph with all capitals or italic font style okay very very difficult to read for uh, magnification users even at that high magnification levels okay again not a vcag requirement but something which is very very important for a magnifier users uh as a uh, you know a uh, choice magnification users generally prefer fonts such as vardana and calibri and they find them comfortable to read that text okay 
these were certain tips that you know which will come in handy while you are designing and developing your web pages and mobile apps uh, i'll be showing a demo uh, but uh, also would like to share the information if you have if you want to contact with me at any time you can reach out to uh, me at uh, Preeti.rora at barrierbreak.com or you can find me on Twitter, uh, now X at Preeti Rora and you can also find me on LinkedIn. Okay, so uh, I'll be switching on my magnifier and uh, also my screen reader. So please bear with the noise of the screen reader because I won't be able to use a magnifier without a screen reader. But uh, let's see. Uh, how you know a magnifier would do on a web page just give me a minute Okay, I'm using a Windows magnifier. Um, okay, so that everybody knows. So we are on a web page, which is a uh, uh, barrier break uh, website home page okay and i'm using the keyboard first to navigate okay so it's a screen reader reading but if visually my focus is on skip to content link um, okay if I want to increase my uh, zoom level, I simply press the Windows key plus and keep zooming in. So I might I don't need to lean into the screen to read it. Now, or I might reduce it because I'm too big. Okay. So uh, there are a whole lot of keystrokes available to help us easily move around. Okay. Okay, now we are, on okay. Okay. we are going through the navigation. Okay, so the good part is you know, uh, you know, accessibility audit. So here the link text is descriptive. Okay, I was talking about descriptive link text versus generic link text, and I'll show you. Uh, one another one in a minute. Okay, what you will see the white space between two links is there, which is acting good as a separator, which is a good design, uh, as far as magnification would go and users in general. Also, what you would see is you know, uh, the link which is in a collapsed state. Now, again, that is indicated with the arrow, which is uh, nearby, and user don't have to pan through in order to find it. Compliance collapse link. Accessible documents collapse link. Partner link. Bob link. Contact link. Main region. Central consultation link. Okay. Now, if I, I'm just tabbing in order to find the generic link. Report accessibility testing link. Okay. I'll reduce the magnification to get it in view. Mental evils. Mental stash. Mental stash. Mental stash. Mental stash. Mental stash. Okay. Report back link. Now here, we are in the uh, main content area. If you see, this is the link. Now I've used using my mouse. Okay, so I'm doing a combination. Now it tells me read more. It also tells me because the screen reader is on that it is about a particular thing. Read more, accessibility testing link. Read more about accessibility testing. Now a magnifier user who's not using speech output and only relying with the mouse will have to go back up, come down, in order to understand what is this read more link about. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Preeti. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, but we're run, we're out of time. Uh, 
No so, worries. That's I've, okay. I've shared uh, your contact information in the chat, and we've got a lot of questions in the Q&A. So uh, you've got them saved. And do you be willing <laughs> to <laughs> answer a few of them in the follow-up email to attendees? We can share the, the list with you. Sure. Uh, I would be happy to, you know, answer those questions. If you can send them over to me, I would, uh, you know, share my responses with everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Malcolm. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Have a great day. Bye-bye. This is the sound of the microphone. It was muted. Uh, I want to thank again uh, Preeti for such a lovely presentation. It was great to see so many questions in the Q&A and so many comments in the chat. Uh, it was a very informative talk. And I want to also thank our ASL team, Beth and Lizzie, and our captioner, Brenda. Thank you for your lovely work, as always and for upcoming IAAP webinars. We have on November 2nd, the last webinar in the Accessibility Testing Considerations mini-series using Chrome's Accessibility Tree for manual testing of HTML and ARIA. And then on November 14th, as part of our Digital Accessibility Series, matching functional needs to assistive technology for deaf and hard of hearing individuals. And then on November 28th, designing accessible navigation systems through wayfinding, signage, and orientation. Once again, thank you so much to everyone for joining us today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.